Hey everyone, my name is Byron Eccles and I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. Over the course of my life, the Lord has spoken to me in various ways. Initially in 1980, while at Westmead Baptist Church during a revival, he spoke to me and said, I, I heard it like it was audible, I have something for you to do. Today, this video, and I've been doing other videos as well, uh, is a fulfillment or a continuation of what the Lord initially called me to do in 1980. In 1996, he showed me a place of rest, and that place of rest was where, was where people can get away from this world as we know it. Leave your cell phone behind, leave your uh, schedule behind, get away from the interferences of the world, and be taught correctly, grounded in the faith, brought up in a great foundation of faith in Christ, the Holy Ghost working in your life, God communicating with you as a father would communicate with a child. In 2008, the Lord began again and has not stopped since then. This is 2024 now. So a good run of about 16 years of weekly, sometimes daily, interaction with God on some level through a dream, vision, word of knowledge, a spoken word, various other means. <clears throat> he has used Westmead Baptist Church over the course of those 16 years to show me errors the church is making. I'm going to use Revelation chapter 2, verse 18, um, starting at verse 18, the church of Thyatira. But as you hear this, realize I'm speaking of things that are occurring in Westmead Baptist Church as we speak, the Southern Baptist Convention as we speak, and many churches throughout the United States as we speak. So there is a lot of involvement contained within churches today that root them into the church of Thyatira that, J that Jesus Christ told us about all the way back during the revelation to John when he was on the Isle of Patmos that we have recorded in the book of Revelation. Let me get right into it. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. And there's a lot that I could say about Thyatira, the city. Uh, the one thing that I just want you to understand is Thyatira used to be named Semiramis. Semiramis, according to myths, was Nimrod's wife. And they set up a false religion in Babylon. And she is considered to be the personification of the Mother Earth or the fertility goddess, you might could say. Um, the District of Columbia in the United States is a district named after the goddess Columbia, who is synonymous with Semiramis. At the time of Babel, when the Tower of Babel came down and the Lord confounded the languages of all people, um, all these people walked away calling the same mother goddess by a different name. You could say at that time, one group walked away and called her Columbia. The other group called her Semiramis. They could not communicate between each other until they established, oh, this is what you're talking about. So I just want to leave it right there at that. It goes on at verse 19. It says, I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. So Jesus Christ is complimenting this church of Thyatira. And he's saying that the last works that this church is doing are even more than the first works that they did. I want to play a clip. This is of a pastor of Westmead Baptist Church um, talking. Uh, it's a former pastor talking about the works of the Southern Baptist Convention. And these are good things. It makes him feel good, and, and this, this clip right here shows that. Listen to what he's saying. I've been involved in the state level and state board of missions, and every time I go and we go through the process of hearing about what we're doing as a, as a state on the state level and the national level, I come away, my head is just swelling because I'm thinking I'm a Southern Baptist. But then right after that compliment and even complimenting that the they're doing more works toward the end, we have verse 20 that says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And to understand Jezebel of the New Testament, we have to figure out, well, what was Jezebel like in the Old Testament? And 1 Kings 16.31 tells us, And it came to pass, as if it had been a light thing for him, and that's Ahab, 
to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Naboth, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbel, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. So Ahab the king married a foreign lady. Her name was Jezebel. Her, her father's name was Ethbel. And Ethbel means with Baal. And Baal was a false god or the sun god. And here in this picture, we have Baal represented. He is represented by a man on a chariot drawn by horses. It is pictured running left to right in the picture right here. Going on in scripture, after he married Jezebel, the Bible tells us, and he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and that is Asherah or Estarte. Those are other names similar to, we mentioned Semiramis and goddess Columbia. Same, same goddess, but she was a Phoenician goddess at the time. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. So to try to gain understanding and a perspective of the situation, we have a Jezebel in the New Testament who is operating similarly to the Jezebel of the Old Testament. In, in the Jezebel of the Old Testament, she sub, seduced Ahab into marriage and then seduced him into worshiping her gods, Baal and also Asherah. Um, so we, when we just... Put this together with another picture of a sub lady prepping herself, getting ready to be the look the best that she can look. Uh, we see here the picture of Jezebel with the, the mirror and making sure she's straight. And let's read the verse again. It says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. So I want to suggest to you that Je the Jezebel that we're looking for may not be a woman, but she's whoever is seducing the people of God in the New Testament churches to commit fornication. And commit fornication, in this case, we're not talking about a physical sexual type act, leaving a spouse or anything like that. We're talking about a spiritual type of fornication where someone who was worshiping God is now worshiping or at least flirting around with some other type of God. In this case, with the chariot, the man-drawn chariot, the sun, we, we could talk about a heavenly host. The Asherah that was there um, was more like, almost like a, the Native American totem poles. They, they, uh, they had a representation of the Asherah, carved out of wood, and, and they, they called it, that's why the Bible calls it a grove. So we have to look and see what is happening in the New Testament church to seduce men away or seduce women away from Jehovah, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. And it's not hard to see. When you, when you look at the, the seduction or what's going on, it's not hard to see. I want to look at Solomon. And, and see what happened in Solomon's time. Because Solomon followed the same, I mean, Ahab followed the same pattern, pattern as Solomon and also Jeroboam. But let's just look at some scripture about Solomon so we can understand a little more. In 1 Kings chapter 11, beginning at verse 4, we read, For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of his, David, his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth. That's that pole I just showed you right there. Also in the picture I just showed you, she was a goddess sitting up on like the, the moon or the earth or something, a globe, uh, right between the two pillars. And Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went fully after, excuse me, and went not fully after the Lord, as did his father David. So there are people among us today who would say that, well, our our uh, temples are built up after Solomon's temple, 
But Solomon's temple was not always good. Solomon built the temple of Jerusalem. Solomon built many other things. But toward the end of Solomon's life, Solomon went to become the opposite of what he had begun as. He was the wisest man on earth at one time, yet he was seduced away from Jehovah God and seduced into worshiping other false gods. So if someone comes to you and says, well, you know, our temple is built after Solomon's temple, find out which time in Solomon's life they're speaking of. Because it, it, it is very possible. They are speaking of a time when Solomon's heart was not right with the Lord, and Solomon went and served other gods. Continuing on, then did Solomon build a high place for Chemos, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Ammon excuse me. And likewise did he for all his strange wives which burned incense and sacrificed unto their gods. So it's just come very clear that Solomon's life was not perfect. He was not perfect before the Lord, as was his father David, although there's a lot that Solomon did correctly. However, at one point in time, he turned bad. So be very leery of someone who says to you, well, this is built after Solomon, etc., when you don't know what, time in Solomon's life something is trying to replicate because something could be replicating the bad side of Solomon or when Solomon was turned away. Israel throughout the course of their time even following Solomon uh, went in and out of fellowship with Jehovah the father of Jesus Christ. And one time there was a king that came up named Josiah it's in, found this account in Second Kings 22. We'll begin at verse 1 just to establish which king we're talking about because we're going to read some scripture later that doesn't indicate the king by name but gives a, a he. So we're speaking of Josiah at this time. And Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedid, Jedidah the daughter of Abiah, and I'm so sorry about my pronunciation, of Boscoth. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David, his father, and turned not aside to the right or to the left. So I'm identifying a king that did right in the eyes of the Lord. Now I want to go and look at what did this king do if he did right in the eyes of the Lord. And while I do this, I want to I want to place a Freemasonry Master Mason diploma on the screen. And as I read these scriptures, I'm going to put arrows on the diploma of the things that Josiah had done. And they're going to indicate to you what Josiah is talking about as this is going on. I'll try to help as I'm going on. But in the next chapter, uh, in 2 Kings, Chapter 23, beginning at verse 4, it states, And the king, and we're talking about Josiah, commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priest of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal. You remember I said Baal was the sun god. We saw him on a chariot uh, earlier. Now you just see him as the sun depicted on the Freemasonry Master Mason, Pro, Master Mason program. And you can see the face on the sun there depicting a personification. And then the scripture goes on to say, and for the grove. So he, he brought out the vessels that were for the grove. And remember I said Asherah. Well, on this particular diploma, it's designated by a crescent moon, the feminine side. The sun fertilizes the earth, as they say, with rays. And the moon reflects that light or the earth absorbs that and brings forth fertilization on the earth. So those two things are mentioned up front. The sun that's on the Master Mason diploma, the grove, which is the moon that's on the Master Mason diploma, which we mentioned earlier was could be Asherah, Semiramis, Astarte, Astarte, uh, those, those things on there. And then the scripture goes on 
and for the all the host of heaven. And you can see stars and even maybe a comet there on the host of heaven. So Hilkiah had took all these things out at the command of the king that did right in the eyes of the Lord, that turned not to the left or to the right, took all these things out of the temple of God, which was the temple that Solomon built at one time. So you can see there are people today still doing as those that did, did not do right in the eyes of the Lord. And it says, and he burned them without, and that means outside Jerusalem, in the field of Kidron, in the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. So immediately you can start seeing there are there's somebody in the church today that is seducing the servants of God to commit fornication just as Solomon committed in his latter days against the Lord by worshiping or having these things uh, in their temple, such as the personification of the moon or Baal, uh, the, the crescent moon representing the female deity or the God, mother goddess, goddess earth, or the host of heaven. Let's go on to some more scripture. At this point, I just want to remind you, the picture that we're looking at here is a picture from a Freemasonry Lodge in London. If I had, Maybe I mentioned that already. I, I have forgotten. But let's look and see what Josiah had Hilkiah continue on and do. In 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 11, we read, And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the sun. And if you remember, I said this is a depiction of, of Baal, the sun god. You could even say Helios if you want to talk about Greek mythology. Helios, the sun god. Um, it's a representation of him going across the sky pulled by chariots. And here we have Hilkiah, the chief priest, at the direction of Josiah, who didn't turn to the left or right in following the Lord. Did that was which was right in the Lord's eyes. The scripture tells us, and he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the sun at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and he burned the chariots of the sun with fire. So you can see from scripture that there are things that the kings of Israel did, those that were right with the Lord, they removed things that you see represented by in Freemasonry from the house of God in Israel. And it's imperative that you know there were kings that did right in the Lord's eyes. There were kings that did not do right in the Lord's eyes. There were kings that did some right and some wrong. And there were kings that did half their life right and then their latter age wrong, as was Solomon. So depending on any given time, that you look or somebody is talking to you, they could be talking to you about a time when things were wrong in Israel or a time when things were right. So I submit to you that the Jezebel in the church is Freemasonry. And I want to explain to you that you have pastors in your churches that have been seduced away by this Jezebel. You have church members that have been seduced away by this Jezebel. You have people within your church, within your congregation, some of them leading, some of them maybe not, who are a part of Freemasonry. And unfortunately, as though the things I've already told you didn't represent the bad things that you saw Israel do in the past, here comes the worst. In the picture that's in front of you and in each picture that you're ever going to see, you'll always see a light emanating light or, or a representation in the center. You can see it here up above the mother goddess between the two pillars. You can see that and there's a triangle in the center of that. That particular triangle represents a deity. So you could say God is a deity. False gods may be our deity. In this case, it's a false god. But that light that is emanating there is 
Lucifer. In the previous picture, you may have seen the star with the star, the, the one point pointing up. That represents, to some, good magic or good witchcraft, the good side. The people that are in Freemasonry, that are in the know of Freemasonry, believe Lucifer is the architect of the universe, not Jehovah. They're actually working on your pastors to, to make sure your pastors use what they call the tetragrammaton um, in their language because the tetragrammaton is also part of that uh, five-pointed star that we talked about in the previous picture with the one star pointed up. The Masorites who wrote the New, I mean, the Old Testament for you. If you have a King James Bible, the Masorites wrote um, the text for that in Hebrew and Aramaic. If you have a New Living Translation or the NIV Translation, excuse me, not New Living, maybe maybe New Living, but NIV for sure, that comes from the Old Testament text that the Masorites preserved. It is considered to be the most accurate text uh, done, and that's why Bibles use it. That text contains vowels, and the purpose of those vowels is to make sure you know how to say the name of Jehovah, the God and Father of Jesus Christ, the creators of the universe, and the Holy Ghost. You don't have in the Masoretic text just a four-letter representation of God. You have that and vowels. It was a it was a way to preserve how to say the name of God prior to there being a tape recorder. So that if you ever found yourself away from a Jew who knew how to say it, he would automatically be able to look at it, see the vowel points that are listed in the Masoretic text and say, it's Jehovah. So these this entity is within the church and if your ma pastor is not a part of it, or he could be a part of Freemasonry and completely have missed these clues, the scales might be falling off his eyes as we speak as to what he's involved in. But there's a tremendous amount of pressure that comes from Freemasonry to guide and to lead your pastors astray. If you go into the Old Testament, you're going to look and see that Elijah ran from Jezebel, when Jezebel threatened Elijah. So anybody that's standing up to the Jezebel or Freemasonry these days are under the fear of what Jezebel might do to them. So your pastor, whose eyes or scales might be falling off his eyes as we speak, if you are a church and your church that is a good Christian church, you should immediately go to your pastor right now. And tell him you support him in his stand against Jezebel. Because this Jezebel has this doctrine of Luciferianism. And the doctrine of the Luciferian doctrine states point blank, Lucifer is God. And your God, Jehovah, and I don't know what all else other names people are trying to tell you the, the God of the Old and New Testament are, uh, but He's saying your God is bad. They're saying that that the serpent in um, that beguiled Eve, the the one that taught them the you know the knowledge of good and evil, that 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 created and could make them God. Sometimes you see the eye. I'll show you the eye here. You'll see that eye personified in that light, the Luciferian light. That's a human eye, and that is because they believe they can be Christ on earth. So. As I was saying, your pastor needs support right now. We have a problem in the Christian church. Because we have suffered or because we have allowed this Jezebel Freemasonry to be a part of the church and to seduce men away from God or seduce men into a, you know, you, you could say, well, I haven't totally gone and served Lucifer, but you've gone to Freemasonry because it, it, it gives you an association with something perhaps that increases your pocketbook. So your God may be Manimum instead of uh, Jehovah. These things are all things we need to look at. And we need to go on and see what are the penalties 
for doing this. The penalty for Solomon going bad, the kingdom was taken, the kingdom was split. Israel was split after Solomon's time. He kept it, God kept the, 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 the kingdom together during Solomon's time only because of David. But after Solomon, the kingdom was split. And then because of these things that we've already shown, Israel and Judah were destroyed and or taken into captivity. God does not change. If you had the worship of false things in the old times that led you to trouble, led you to be taken away captive to Babylon, and you are allowing the same thing to be taking place in the New Testament church, and God doesn't change, God's going to deal with you harshly, and we're going to look at the rest of these verses and see what's coming to the Christian church. Now, Revelation 2, verse 21 states, And I gave her, and it's speaking of Jezebel, space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. So Jezebel is an organization, Freemasonry. Freemasonry is referred to as a her, as most organizations are, even countries. Um, and I just want to show you a small example of what the Lord has done in my life and I've shared with Freemasons. I was given probably 30 or 40 dreams of individual Freemasons around the North Alabama area, people that I grew up with, people that I've met, etc. And I made two videos. The first one I did was called Freemasonry, the Jezebel in the Church. It's a two-hour, two, almost two-hour, 30-minute video. I uh, published it November the 12th in 2021, and I sent it out publicly, but also I sent personal messages to each Freemason that I put uh, a part of the dream that I had of them in the video. And I explained, There's you can go, it's on YouTube, you can just do a search for Freemasonry, colon, the Jezebel in the church, or I go to my site, Juniper Tree and Beyond. It's all one word, Juniper Tree and Beyond. I give a lot of information there, but the, the Lord was having me notify each individual Mason that he had notified me about so that they would know they have time to repent. Some of those are in your churches. Westmead, yes. There are, there are Freemasons in your church that know that I, the Lord has notified me and they know their st situation. I produced another one called Freemasonry, the Jezebel in the Church, Part 2, on March the 28th of 2022, about an hour long. I included more Masons that the Lord had shown, told me about uh, in that video. So the verse that states, and I gave her space to repent, and she repented not, uh, to repent of her fornication, and she repented not, um, that is just one little section involved here in North Alabama, which Freemasons had the opportunity uh, to, to change how they're doing business. Let, let's continue on. And in Revelation 2, verse 22, Behold, I will cast her, that's Jezebel, into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I just want to say that her is Jezebel, referring to it as a her. The, the, the Bible also classifies countries as her. So in this case, Freemasonry could be a her. The country of Elam, I put up here Ezekiel 30. 224, just identifying Elam. I'm going to skip to the next page in the next verse. And it says, They have set her, and that's Elam, a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitudes. And I just, I, I use that because when you hear that Jezebel uh, is going to be cast into a bed, I, I would imagine it's going to be something like Elam. But then you see that the, the scripture, it says, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Now, this right here gets scary. And the reason it's scary is because I have seen through dreams and visions Christian persecution happening here in the United States. In one dream, I was in an arena. And 
I was tied up. My hands were up above my head, tied like to with a rope up to a pole, and I was being whipped. As I looked into the audience, I was seeing church members, my you know current people that I've been church members with, in the audience enjoying the fact that I was being whipped. So when you start talking about great tribulation and you start saying that those people that commit adultery with Jezebel, well, you, you can say that, well, if you're a, if you are a Freemason, then you're committing adultery. But also I, I believe it extends to those churches that are Freemason friendly. I, I really do. I, I believe that you, you are messing around with Luciferians messing around people who worship Lucifer, and you are putting yourself at great risk, just like what happened in the Old Testament times. But there is a clause there that says, except they repent of their deeds. Now, a lot of people talk about a rapture and this next major event that's going to happen. I'm telling you, this is before any second coming or coming of Jesus Christ. This is in this is at one of the churches, you know, in, in the beginning of the book of Revelation. There is an absence of a fear of the Lord. And this is Jesus Christ telling a church, a New Testament church, because you have done this, I'm going to put you in to great tribulation unless you repent of your deeds. My recommendation, any church that has Freemasons involved in it, ask them to get out. If they don't get out, you're going to have to somehow separate yourself from Freemasons. Or you may have to, as a Christian, you may have to leave the church that you're in. Because the church is, in, in many cases, the church is, is run by Freemasons. When I was about 17 years old, sophomore, 16, 17, something like that, I was a sophomore in high school. And uh, the Lord spoke to me during a revival meeting at Westmead Baptist Church. I was naive. I went down front, told a pastor, hey, God just spoke to me. He said he has something for me to do. And that's it. I was being notified in 1980 to, of doing this video and the things that I'm doing now. There's people that are still members of Westmead Baptist Church today that shook my hand on that night and said, congratulations. God bless you. We never knew, <laughs> including myself, that it was going to turn into something like this. But this is a calling of God. And it's without repentance. But anyway, the, the pastor that I shook hands with that night, I didn't know this until like two, three years ago. He was a Freemason. So I had been set up as a child in a church to be in the church of great tribulation. Because of the existing Luciferian worshipers, sun worshipers, Baal worshipers that were already in the church. The church was infiltrated before us. I even have a video I put out there. The Southern Baptists have a seminary, and they were doing a seminary. They have their chapel. Inside the chapel, they had Baal imagery. They had this one seat cushion with a lamb, and behind the lamb was a, um, a sun. Anytime you see that Im imagery, you're talking about some type of foreign god worship. Look at First Baptist Church of Huntsville. First Baptist Church of Huntsville have all the heavenly hosts painted on the outside and on their stained glass windows on the inside. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is coming. His eyes are going to be like a flame of fire, his feet like fine brass, and he is judging the situation. And it's going to be dealt with harshly, way more harshly than your pastor is even willing to tell you. Some of you pastors, you got, you got to cut your ties. You know, you got to quit jeopardizing your church members just because you want to be nice to um, a Freemason. You, you you can be nice to a Freemason, but you you can't allow them to 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 be in your churches. They're going to get people in your church killed. And I've told Freemasons this. I told I've told Freemasons, look, dude. I said I believe that you know Jesus Christ and you're saved, but you're going to be dealt with for this problem. Let me go to the, the next verse, verse 23. And I will kill her children. I will kill Freemasonry's Freemasons with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give it to every one of you according to your works. 
uh, just just a point here. I believe there is an order in which this is going to happen. I believe that there there are um, there are Christian people who are Freemasons, and they will be killed. However, there are going to be some Freemasons that you will see who are not Christian. They just happen to be in your church. And those guys are going to jeopardize your life. There's one person at Westmead Baptist Church. He is going to be, or at least the Lord showed me, him, perhaps as a type, not necessarily him himself, but someone from Freemasonry, will be given a jurisdiction over Dallas, Texas. And they will execute New World Order-style government in the Dallas, Texas area. I've done a video over by um, the Doubletree Hotel in Decatur, Alabama, because the Doubletree is going to be a headquarters for that type of activity here in Decatur, the Decatur area. Times are <laughs> coming to an end. Times are, are, are coming to a, a, a serious end. And, and people... You know, the, the one thing that I can tell you that's missing from modern day is the fear of the Lord. People do not understand when Jesus Christ says he's going to put people into great tribulation unless they repent of the deed. People don't understand the situation there. And some of you kids, man, you're so young, your parent, you're, 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 you're dependent on your parents to make the right decisions for you. Well, the one thing that your parent can do is to make sure you are not caught up in this Church of Thyatira syndrome that I'm talking about today. I call it a syndrome. Anyway, going on in verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine. Now, I just want to say the doctrine that I, I believe we're speaking of is, one, having having uh, your foot in the church and your foot in masonry. Number two is tolerating Freemasonry in the church. So maybe there's several points that could be made about this doctrine. One, the tolerance of Freemasonry in the church. Two, participating in Freemasonry in the church. But there, there's one other thing I haven't mentioned. I should have mentioned this earlier. When it talks about that they were seduced by Jezebel to commit fornication, I, I want you to know Luciferians, Lucifer, there's a, there's a scripture in the Bible, and I'll pull it up on the screen for you, talk about it. It says, how art thou fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning, which did weaken the nations? Luciferians weaken your society. Luciferians weaken your church by encouraging you to commit fornication. One time, point blank, no mistaken. The Lord showed me the television show Gunsmoke was fornication. And that was a period of time where I was, you know, spending time with a television show as opposed to with the board. He's also shown me that music um, is also a big distraction for people. I did a video earlier that, that was mentioned of the genre hair metal at Westmead Baptist Church on their website. I put a video in that video that I did of a man being sacrificed to Lucifer in the hair metal video. I'll show you the thing here. It was, <clears throat> there's a, he's, he's riding on a triangle He's being sacrificed. And, and Luciferians, they have this thing where um, they make deals. Basically, you could say they make deals with the devil. And they have to perform X amount of things in order to keep their income flowing. And there's, there's one point in which they'll have to sacrifice or bring Lucifer, the devil, a person for sacrifice per year. That's how bad this is, guys. All right. So in verse 24, let me read it again just to make sure I'm on track. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many have not this doctrine, the doctrine of tolerance of Jezebel, the doctrine of committing adultery with Jezebel. And then, like I was saying, Lucifer weakens the nations. They, they do that under the umbrella of um, liberalism. And by liberalism, what I'm saying is, they want people to be liberal. So at one point in time in your church, there was a probably people that stood in the church and they were like, no women are going to wear low cut dresses. Uh, you know, like in, in the, around the neck area, probably no, no women are going to wear short skirts. 
Uh, they're probably saying we're not going to listen to vile type music. Now, the churches have become more liberal because there's enemy inside the churches. They're known as Freemasons or Luciferians. They are deliberately weakening the nations. That's how that's how this operates. So, and also the, the scripture goes on, it says, and which have not known the depths of Satan. I'm going to cover one more thing. The Bible talks about a cup, a golden cup, full of abominations that was in Mystery Babylon's hands. The Lord showed me we are Mystery Babylon, the United States. Within that cup, there, there's it's full of abominations. I, I can tell you that without you experiencing a death, you know, like a murder in your life, just turn on your television, you experience it. So vile television programs would be in that cup. Songs talking about killing people or various types of sex or whatever like that, that would be in that cup. During the course of the day, if you're sipping on those things, then you are drinking from that cup. And if you drink from that cup, it makes you drunk. It alters your existence here on earth because your mind is now uh, being emphasized or being um, influenced by those things. So you could go from a point in which you were with the Holy Ghost, you were under, uh, have a close relationship with God, and then begin your tirade with worldly music or begin your tirade with uh, worldly television programs, etc. And the Lord was, was set his face against you. And he's, you're not going to be unsaved. You're not going to um, be sent to hell. But there is a separation between you and God. If you look in Ezekiel 14, it says, any man that set up these idols in the heart. Well, these idols of the heart interfere with your relationship with God. I, I can tell you this is a personal story. You know, I'm originally a Westmead Baptist Church church member. The first time God ever spoke to me in my life, I was at Westmead Baptist Church. I can tell you that I walked the halls of Westmead Baptist Church for probably the next two to four months, wondering why is nobody else in this church as serious about God as me? I, I found out what it was like to be lonely in church because no one else cared that much about God. I can tell you, I don't know that Westmead has changed. I don't, I don't know, but I, I can tell you this. People care about making sure they're there for services. They care about making sure that they um, look the role. But I want, you, I want to challenge you to find who at Westmead Baptist Church has directly heard from God and published it already. Don't don't take a point where you say, well, I should have published it or I should have done it. I should, you know. Who in the past have you known? that said, God said this, God showed me this. In my interaction with God, I had this vision. I'm asking those questions because I want you to know there's so many idols of the heart. So many idols of the heart that God, there's, it's like a petition. It's an estrangement from God. Look at Ezekiel 14. So That's about the end of Revelation chapter 22 that I want to cover. Um, I, I just want you to know there is a New Testament te Testament church going into great tribulation. And that New Testament church is the, te the New Testament church that flirts with Freemasonry. Some of you pastors, you're Freemasons right now. You need to get out. I, I joined a fraternity when I was in college. The Freemasons birthed the fraternities, fraternities and sororities. Um, I have since withdrawn. I, I, I tried to quit. They don't let you quit. They have to kick you out. So I sent them a letter saying, I want out of Kappa Alpha orders when I was in. So they sent me a letter saying I was kicked out for some violation. That's how they That's how they operate. You Freemasons that want to get out, man, I'm telling you, dude, I'm telling you, I know it's hard. You know, there needs to be Christian support for Freemasons that want freedom from Freemasonry. Because you already, you've already taken these blood oaths. Anyway, that, that covers the, the portion about Revelation chapter 22. I just want to close by saying some things, and I'll be out of here. As I'm bringing this to a close, I just want to share a couple things, try to limit it. I'm already about 40 minutes so far. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that is difficult to do is to hear someone tell you something and, and not give some weight to it. 
So like I've just shown you that, that Freemasonry has the, all the symbols that Josiah had taken out of the temple of God. And the symbols, when, when uh, King Solomon went bad, the symbols that represented the things that King Solomon went bad with. So what will happen is you'll go back into your church or you'll go you'll be around people and they'll say, oh, it's not that way because I'm, I'm a Freemason and it's just not that way. What you have to do is you have to decide in your mind, if I'm standing before Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ came to this earth as God in the flesh and God, Jehovah, who is the father of Jesus Christ, stated early on to Moses, thou shalt have no other gods before me, and then gave you an Old Testament to look at and see what he did to Israel when they did things like you see on the Freemasonry Master Mason Diploma. He tore a nation apart. He tore the two kingdoms after they split, Judah and Israel. He tore them apart. Um, right now, the Gentiles, us, are trying, you know, pretty much making them jealous of their uh, time away from God. They haven't repented yet. They won't until they're in major trouble when the Antichrist is about to attack them. Um, so th there's so much more that could be said. But you have to realize you're going to run into somebody and say, no, man, I've been a Freemason forever, and it's not like that. And you have to understand that there's so many people that are in churches that don't understand the things of God. And there's so many people in Freemasonry that don't know the higher level type things of Freemasonry. But the people who are at the higher levels will use the lower level inips, or they call it adept or something. It's people that learn more. The people that don't learn as much, they'll be used. So for an example, um, there's people in Freemasonry that don't know all the depths of Satan yet, but they're benefiting financially because of Freemasonry. They will have to decide in their mind, who am I going to serve, God or this money? And when I say God, I'm talking about God, Jehovah, the Father of Jesus Christ. Um, so if you listen to those people, they're going to sound like they really know what they're talking about, and they're going to be people that are part of this organization. But, and if they're in the organization and they still believe that Jehovah is God, they don't understand the organization they're in. Their, their organization has libraries full of books that explain the things I'm telling you right here. So anyway, I'm going to let this go. This is a video trying to highlight how Israel went bad and then Freemasonry cherishes the things Israel did when Israel went bad. And you have a whole Bible full of examples of what God did to the Israelites when they did these things that went that went wrong when they worshiped the other guys that Freemasonry has on their posters and, you know, the, the, to, to put a, to put a, um, your God as Lucifer, uh, and then being a Christian church, a child in their first year might be more confused, but it would be difficult because you can't be in an organization that worship loose worships Lucifer. And see all these wrong symbols and stay in it unless you're just confused or you're part of them. So I'm going to let it go and I'll see you later.